Pressure. Pressure is defined as the force per unit area. P, capital P for pressure, equals force divided by area. Pressure is a scalar and its units are in pascals. One pascal equals one newton per square meter. This definition of pressure is true in any situation, not just fluids. You can see from the equation that pressure depends on force and area. So which would hurt more, do you think? Getting your toe stepped on with the heel of a sneaker or the heel of a high-heeled shoe? Why? The same amount of water is added to two different vessels, shown to the left. Both vessels have the same mass. The circular bottom of vessel B has twice the diameter as that of vessel A. Suppose the two vessels are placed on a tabletop. How does the pressure that vessel B exerts on the table compare to the pressure that vessel A exerts on the table? They both exert the same force on the table due to the gravitational pull of Earth on the containers and the water. However, the area over which that force is exerted on the table is smaller for vessel A Therefore, the pressure on the table is larger. By doubling the diameter, the area of the bottom of vessel B is four times larger than the area of the bottom of A. Remember, the bottoms are circular, which means the area of that circular bottom of the vessel is pi r squared. So, by doubling the diameter, we've also doubled the radius. So, r, we have 2r. Therefore, the new area is equal to 4 pi r squared. That was our original area. Therefore, our new area is 4 times the old area. Since pressure equals force divided by area, if we quadruple the area, we lower the pressure by 1 fourth, the original value. So you can also think of that as the pressure exerted on the table by A is 4 times larger than B. A fluid is made of a large number of molecules bouncing around off the walls of the container. The net force of all of the molecules is perpendicular to the wall. That way. This is a microscopic view of pressure. It applies to water in a beaker as well as helium gas in a balloon. Now, suppose that a macroscopic object is submerged into a fluid. The fluid will exert a perpendicular force on every surface of the object. This force, divided by the area of the contact surface, is the pressure exerted by the fluid upon a given part of the object. Here is a picture that illustrates what I was saying on the previous slide. In the presence of gravity, a fluid exerts greater pressure at greater depth. A submerged object will be pressed upon more strongly as it sinks lower into the fluid. This is due to the weight of the column of liquid above that point, or above the object here. You may have experienced the relationship of pressure and depth by diving to the bottom of a swimming pool. In the next slide, we'll derive it. Suppose an imagined circular surface of area A here rests at depth h below the surface of a fluid. What we're doing in this slide is we're going to calculate the pressure at this point in the fluid, at that depth below the surface. So we start with our pressure equation. Pressure equals force over area. The pressure acting upon that disk is due to a force, the weight of the column of fluid above it. So see how there's this column of liquid above that point? The weight of that liquid is providing that force. So instead of force, we're going to have mg, where that is the weight of the liquid. We can express the mass of this cylinder of fluid as the product of its volume and density. What we're going to do is multiply the top and bottom of this equation by h. And that's OK, because h over h is just 1. But look, now we have a h on the bottom. The, the area here of this circle times the height will actually give us the volume of that cylinder. So AH becomes volume, capital V. And look, now we have M over V, which is the definition of density. 
So we can replace m over v with rho. The pressure at this point in a fluid is rho times g times h, where rho is the density of the fluid, and h is the depth below the surface. The pressure at a given point in a fluid depends only on the density of the fluid, the depth, and the strength of the gravitational field. Notably, the shape of the container makes no difference. This is true for all incompressible fluids, since an incompressible fluid has a fixed density no matter the depth. So pressure equals rho gh. The pressure at this point in this beaker is going to be the same as the pressure at that same depth under the surface as this pressure here under this little column of fluid in this small vial. Open the FET simulation under pressure. You can click this little globe in the corner. That's a link. You can see using this FET simulation that if you draw a horizontal line across any container holding liquid, the pressure will be the same at any point on that line. All the points that fall on the red line are at an equal depth in the liquid and therefore have the same pressure. So I've pulled this up. You can see we have our little pressure gauge. Now, we haven't gone over atmospheric pressure yet, but this is the pressure due to the atmosphere in the, you know, above the liquid. That is how much there is. If we go below the liquid, we see that we now have added on more pressure due to the fluid itself. If these points are at the same depth, they will have the same pressure. And we can use different shaped containers. You can see that at the same depth, you get the same pressure. At sea level on Earth, the atmospheric pressure, P0, is about 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. This is called one atmosphere, or ATM. There are other units of pressure, like bar and PSI, but the AP2 test will only include pascals. Recall that one pascal is one newton per square meter. Roughly speaking, this is like spreading the weight of an apple over the surface of a card table. On human scales, it's a small quantity. Atmospheric pressure tells you how much all of the air above you weighs. The air above one square meter laid flat at sea level weighs roughly 100,000 newtons. That means that a card table at sea level lies below roughly 10 metric tons of air. Pressure gauges are used on scuba diving gear, bicycle pumps, and industrial equipment. Most gauges measure the pressure above or below atmospheric pressure. This difference is called gauge pressure, or P sub G. In the case of a fluid below the atmosphere, like a lake, ocean, pool, the gauge pressure is equal to rho GH. Absolute pressure is the sum of the atmospheric pressure and gauge pressure. So here we have P0, which is the atmospheric pressure. P sub G is the gauge pressure, and if you add those together, that is the absolute pressure. So in our FET simulation, remember if you're in the air above the fluid, you have that approximate 100,000 pascals of pressure just due to the air, the atmosphere here. And if you go below that, you're starting to add on pressure due to the weight of the fluid above that point. If you have a U-shaped tube like this one, you know that the pressure at points A and B must be equal since they're on the same horizontal line. So this is a little bit different than what we saw before. But if you draw that horizontal line, you'll know that the pressure right here is the same as the pressure right there. However, since we have two liquids with different densities, we have water here and oil there, points A and B are at different depths below the surface. See, here we only have that much depth. Over here, we have that much. Since oil is less dense than water, you need a greater volume of oil 
to balance out the water. So this apparatus may be able to help us compare densities of different liquids. All right, first, because both of the ends of the pipe are open, they're both uh, subject to the atmospheric pressure, that's equal. So now we can use the formula rho GH for the columns of fluid above points A and B. And we can derive the following relationship between the densities of oil and water. So we have rho GH of oil here, the pressure here, is equal to rho gh for this amount of oil. So we have the density of oil times g because we're on earth times this height, capital H. That's the depth below the fluid. That must be equal because the pressure at this point must be equal to the pressure at that point. That has to be equal to the pressure due to this fluid here, this water. And that's rho gh again. But now we have the density of water, we have G because we're still on Earth, and we have this depth, which is, given this diagram, capital H minus lowercase h will give us this depth here. Since oil is less dense than water, you need a greater volume of oil to balance out the water. Note the formula above assumes that the U-shaped tube has a fixed diameter, right? So we have the same diameter for both of these sides. The tube neither widens nor narrows. We also have assumed that the fluids are stationary, and later we'll learn why that's important. Italian physicist Evangelista Torricelli invented a mercury barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. Sometimes air pressure is described in millimeters or inches of mercury. A glass tube is filled with mercury. This glass tube sits upside down in a container called the reservoir, which also contains mercury. The mercury level in the glass tube falls, creating a vacuum at the top. There is no pressure at the top of the tube. Note, mercury is toxic, so you won't use it at home or school. The barometer works by balancing the pressure due to the mercury in the glass tube against the atmospheric pressure. If the pressure due to the column of mercury is less than the atmospheric pressure, the mercury level in the glass tube rises. If the pressure due to the column of mercury is more than the atmospheric pressure, the mercury in the tube falls. Recall that the pressure at every point on this red line, this horizontal line, is equal. So if you have a point here and a point here, the pressure is the same at both of those points. The pressure here is due to one atmosphere of air. The pressure here is due to the weight of this fluid.